In this hands-on video, I'm going to show you how to build a Kubernetes home lab with a Raspberry Pi, and we're going to do some really cool stuff with it too. The bill of materials are, you need a Raspberry Pi, and I recommend getting the four with four gigs of RAM, a 32 gig SD card, preferably something like SanDisk from a reputable retailer. We'll then install Kubernetes with K3S. This is the lightest weight Kubernetes that's available from Darren Shepard at Rancher. It's compliant Kubernetes, so don't worry that you're gonna learn something different to what you use at work. It's pretty much the same experience. And we can install that using Ketchup that I developed. It's a Golang tool that just makes everything a bit easier than it would be otherwise. Inlet's operator will give us a public IP address for any services that we expose. And then we can install OpenVAS with a single click using Ketchup again. So what's the method? Well, first of all, we'll use Ketchup install, which is a command that can install Kubernetes onto any Raspberry Pi or VM. It will download a kube config file into your home directory, and then you can use that to access the cluster from your laptop. So you don't even have to log into the Raspberry Pi, but you will need SSH access. The next thing we'll do is we will run Nginx and expose that with the inlets operator. Once we've done that, we'll have a public IP address to hit that Nginx website, and we'll see it in the logs. We'll then deploy OpenFAS using a single command and access it over the internet. And that's that. It's gonna take us about 10 minutes, and you can follow along at home or get to it when you have a few moments. So I'm gonna show you how to install um, K3S onto a Raspberry Pi. That's full Kubernetes, but a lightweight version using Ketchup, a tool that I wrote to wrap the installer. We're then gonna install Inlet's operator, which is gonna give us public internet access both ways. So we'll be able to give an IP to a friend and they'll be able to call a service on our computer. We could also expose a blog or integrate with GitHub. And then the last thing we'll do is install OpenVAS. So I have a Raspberry Pi that I set up earlier. And what I want to do is um, get the IP on my local network. I can then use the K3S tool and the install command, passing in the IP and the name of the user. This will use SSH across the network and it will then invoke the scripts of all the correct parameters. And K3S should be up and running in a, a moment or two. That, this has been great. It seems to have worked very well. So I've now got a kube config file. And this is what we generally would use to configure our local client. On, in this instance, I've got a Mac mini here to the cluster. Now we can go kubectl, get nodes, and we see the Raspberry Pi. So I can now log out of the Raspberry Pi, and I don't need to be in it at all for this part of the demo. Right, so what should we do next? Well, um, how about the inlets operator? Well, the inlets operator can let us get access in. The example that I like to give is that um, you perhaps trying to get a webhook from GitHub but when you have your Raspberry Pi at home, there's just no way you can get internet access to it. You could manually try and play with a tool like Ngrok, but it might be more trouble than it's worth. So if we look at the GitHub repo for the inlets operator, I've actually already cloned it down. And what I want to do is just run through the instructions for Raspberry Pi. First thing we need to do is to create a secret using an access token from DigitalOcean I've just saved it in that file. You can do the same thing from your dashboard. Packet.net is also supported. And what will happen is that we'll actually use that, uh, that host as a kind of um, symbiotic IP address. So we'll actually be getting the IP address to share with the world from DigitalOcean. And we'll have a tunnel that will run from our local cluster all the way out. So I'm just applying these files and you have to be careful because there's ARM HF and there's AMD64. We want ARM for Raspberry Pi, just like in the guide. Right, so we now have the custom resource, the 
RBAC rules, which is about how Kubernetes is going to deal with the operator and the operator itself. And the next thing to do is to actually try and run something. I'm going to run Nginx. Then going to expose it as a type load balancer. And if you're on public cloud, this is the point at which you would then get an IP address. Amazon will go and provision you an, L5, an F5, whatever they're using there. I'm looking at this and I'm seeing the word pending. Now we're going to continue to see that because there's no control, there would be no controller able to take that and give you an IP address normally. But we've installed the inlets operator. Okay, so that deployment that I exposed now got a public IP and we can see it here. There was also um, a DigitalOcean VM that was provisioned. That original API call took us 1.5 seconds, we can see, and now we have that tunnel established. So what's in the cluster? Well, we get a tunnel, a CRD, and we've got our original service, and we also get a deployment that runs the client for us. So we can look at the logs of that, and the first few times it's going to say um, connection refused. And this is why the tunnel is trying to connect to the new server. The server has to be booted up. And just because it's got the IP doesn't mean that it's ready to receive traffic. So that's why we see a few failures. But that's actually OK, because it means that if the server restarts, the tunnel will reconnect. And if the client gets disconnected, it will reconnect too. So now let's hit the IP. But actually, I do want to just get the logs of Nginx first and follow that. Okay, and now let's do it. Oh, there we are. So as I refresh this, we're getting my IP address for my house showing up each time I call that. And uh, it's just simple as that. So we've now connected through my Raspberry Pi all the way to the internet and back again, and we're receiving traffic. The logs at the bottom are from the client that's running in the cluster as a pod. The logs at the top are from the operator. But what I want to do now is show you another trick of catch up, and that is the new app command. Now this is still in a pull request, but if you want access, you can just go and build your own copy of this. By the time you watch your video, it might even be ready. I'm going to go K3S app install app, um, app install, and then, well, let's see what we can do. Install open fans. So let's do it. And down below, we'll get the pods across the cluster. Let's just see what happens. Well, that was very, very quick. Up top, what happened was, uh, as we could probably scroll back while the pods are being pulled, we started off by doing the install command, which downloaded the Helm chart, gave us a basic auth password. It then ran a bunch of um, Helm, Helm commands to template just for Raspberry Pi, all of the OpenFAS containers, and then it applied them. And that's what we can see at the bottom. It's those containers are gradually coming up now. But I don't know if we have a load balancer configuration yet or not. So let's see what we've we got. We've got a node port. So we can edit that. And this is probably a flag that we'll get in the future with, uh, with the tool to choose whether you want a node port or not. Generally, all you do to turn a node port into a load balancer is change this line here. And then we can probably get rid of the node port. And let's see if it's happy with that. Yep. And look what happened. Immediately, that, um, I, well, that load balancer was detected by the operator. You know, as soon as I'd hit exit, and here it is, waiting for the public IP. The DigitalOcean VM is being provisioned here. 
And once that is up, we'll have a new public IP address that we can use to get into the cluster. So I've now taken the IP address that I got from the load balancer. This is going through a virtual machine on DigitalOcean and I can see it up here. Um, we don't have any functions deployed yet. So what I'm going to do is use FASCLI store list, look at the Raspberry Pi section of the store and what I'd like to deploy is let's put down node info. Um, we also need to put the gateway address. Let's do that too. Which is port 80. And we can see that's just popped up in the OpenFAS UI. The other thing we want to deploy, let's just deploy Figlet for fun. And so that's now deployed and it will pop up in the UI again. So looking at node info, it's currently not ready and that's because Kubernetes is going to be pulling the pod for it. And we'll see that coming down over here. So the two pods are now being pulled down through my home internet connection. They'll then be um, brought onto the Raspberry Pi and running. So they're almost running at the same time here. So node info is ready. I'm going to hit invoke. And we can see we're running on a Raspberry Pi. Look at the verbose and see the actual CPU architectures. So we've got the four cores there. Isn't that great? So we've got that running and Figlet. All using Ketchup to install OpenFAS, Inlet's operator to get a tunnel out, and DigitalOcean to provide us with that public IP address. Now at any point, I can delete OpenFAS and I can delete that Nginx service and those DigitalOcean virtual machines will just get deleted for me and I don't have to worry about them anymore. So we've gone from having absolutely nothing on the on the Raspberry Pi at all to having Kubernetes. I've got a cube config file actually on my computer and I'm using it from my Mac now. We've got a pod for the tunnel and if the tunnel crashes, it will get restarted and um, everything is running in a very short period of time using developer friendly tools. So go and try this out and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch with me, send me an email, alex at openfaz.com or sign up for OpenFaz Slack. Thank you.